Oh, so the unlucky 13th episode goes to the Long Beach review. So, I expect lots of things to go wrong in this episode because I'm actually one of those few people who believe in those. Well, I'm believing the myth of the number 13. It hasn't been kind to me in the past, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of have reasons for that, but yeah, let's, let's, let's hope nothing really bad goes wrong. I, I can see the light next to me is toppling towards me though, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm very wary of that. R roll it. Hey, I'm Kev Kerr, Mr. Kerr, and welcome to Power Over Still the Will Most for Show on the Elusive Kev channel. And in today's episode, we are going to review the Grand Prix of Long Beach from the IndyCar series. It was a race full of nose changes, and I might even go into the front nose change industry because after this race, I'm very convinced it's a lucrative business and there was lots of passing though lots of interesting strategies and lots of good racing at the front middle and back of the field and lots of commercials as well so if i do go into that nose business i know it will be advertised on tv almost immediately because there seems to be an advert every five minutes on the coverage in america on the indycar series but Let's not talk about the coverage. We're here to talk about the winners and losers of the weekend. The driver, team and overtake of the race. And of course we start with the race recap. So the race recap. And it was a very interesting race. With an interesting qualifying as well. And on pole was Dario Frank Kitty, after a horrible season so far, he managed to get pole ahead of Ryan Hunterway, Will Power, Takuma Sato, Mike Conway, and Heyo Castro Nevis. And James Hinchcliffe was so close to getting into that fast six qualify, missing out by 19 thousandths of a second. He had to go to four decimal places here in America. TK or Tony Kanan was 8th for KV Race and Charlie Kimball was 9th, EJ Viso 10th, Graham Ray Hall 11th and J.R. Hildebrand was in 12th for Panther Race and in qualifying but at the start of the race Hinchcliffe was on the move but it was a clean start, a bit of a surprise to this, we normally expect some fireworks into turn 1 but no one was into the wall but later on the lap in turn five Dixon got hit by Volce from behind the young Frenchman the rookie kind of missing his breaking point there and that punctured he, Dixon's right rear tyre and damaged Volce's wing and Volce got a drive through penalty for that as a result but on the next lap and after Dixon and Volce had pitted Bourdais got past Newgarden into turn one trying to move his way from the back of the field but his dragon racing teammate didn't quite pull off a similar move into turn nine carrying too much speed when he was attempting to move on Simona Di Silvestro. Marco Andretti pitted for a new nose and he changed to option tyres and this brought out the full course caution as they had to move the young Cleandon's car away from turn nine. Wilson Carter and Voltier also pitted during this time. On lap 8 it went green and we saw Ryan Hunter Ray get the jump on Dayo Rankitty at the start. But Rankitty out break Hunter Ray into turn 1 after defending from Salto into that turn. Power and Hinchcliffe they gently touched each other in turns 2 and 3 but Power got passed into turn 4. Kimball he was up to 6th while Kasha Nevers was dropping places after nudging Conway in turn two and damaging his front wing. On the next lap Ray Hall got past Tony Kanon and so the order at the end of lap 10 was Frankitti from Ryan Hunter Ray, Sato, Power, Hinchcliffe and Kimball 
Ray Hall, Canaan and Viso and Conway completed the top 10. Hildebrand, Castro Neves, Allmendinger, Jakes, Bourdais, New Garden, Pagano, Servia, Andretti, Alex Tagliani completed the top 20 with Justin Wilson down in 21st, Ed Carpenter, Simona Di Silvestro, Voltier, Anna Beatrix and Scott Dixon. On that 12 though there were some moves with Canon looking to get past Ray Hall for 7th in turn 1 but Ray Hall defended. Cashinov has pitted for a new wing and some new black tyres after holding out for that and it, on those reds and they just did not last for him. The interesting part about the early part of the race, the strategy was Sato, Hinchcliffe and Tagliani, the only guys starting on blacks, so everyone was on reds. On the next lap, Sato got right behind Ryan Hunter A with Frank Kitty just pulling away a bit at the front and so we had kind of a train behind Hunter A as he struggled with his tyres or was trying to save them. On that 19, Sato, Hinchcliffe and Conway, they were the only drivers on the blacks now in the top 10. Pagano pitted from 16th for blacks and on the next step, Carpen Ed Carpenter got past Simona Di Silvestro until he pitted and he went on to reds. On the next lap though, we heard some team radio from Ryan Hunter. Ray, I'm on tyre saving mode. Remind me to change it later. So he's probably going to a smoother engine torque map to help save those rear tyres and, you know, be a bit smoother on those rear tyres. Voltaire, he got past Andretti to turn one for 18th at the back. On the next lap, Ryan Hunter was defending from Sato into turn 9 as I said there was a bit of a train behind him now Conway pitted from 10th and went on to some new reds and rejoined in 22nd place on the next that we saw Sato go down the inside of Hunter Ray into turn 1 for 2nd and he pulled away from the reigning champion as he was quickest in the top 6 and so he was catching Frank Kitty now Inchcliffe, he had a look at Powell into turn 5 on the next lap on lap 24. On lap 26, Newgarden and Jakes, they pitted, but Jakes had a problem with his the front air hose when the guy was coming to, you know, over the wall and he was going across the car. The air hose went into his front ring and kind of got trapped and so he cost him a couple of seconds there, unfortunately, for James Jakes. But, you know, he got loose and he got away on the next lap all Almendinger and Serbia pity with Almendinger changing a damaged nose and this was actually caused by hitting J.R. Hildebrand he, he Hildebrand in front of him got a bit loose out of turn f turn six sorry and Almendinger was right behind him and you know just hit the rear a bit and so he damaged his front ring power was down the inside of Hunter Ray into turn one and up to third place. On that 28, Sato's right behind Frank Kitty with Castro Nevis just ahead of them, you know, on the verge of getting that Castro Nevis. But Sato, Ryan Hunter Ray, Kimball, and Hinchcliffe pitted at the end of the lap, so some breathing space for Frank Kitty. Then on the next lap, we saw Canon get past Kimball into turn four, and Frank Kitty pitted. But he had to wait for EJ Viso who was coming into his pits and so that kind of delayed him on the pit exit. Kimball and then Tagliani got together in turn 5 with Tags hitting the weir of Kimball but Kimball he tried to make a move into turn 7. Tagliani is trying to do this switch back move going wide in turn 6 and going down the outside or carrying the momentum around the outside into turn 7. Unfortunately, Kimball tried to dive down his inside on cold tyres and he went into the wall and he collected Tagliani and so the caution came out and Will Power pitted at this time. Great, great pit stop there for Power and he came out in front, I think, of Sato or Frankitti. I think it was Frankitti he came out of and Sato was actually into the lead so he came out ahead of Frankitti into second. And Tagliani and Kimball were now the only guys that are that down as they got their cars free. And Dixon, Scott Dixon, you know, that trouble on the first lap, he went that down, but he's regained it now in this safety car. 
period and Vultain Wilson up to 12 and 13 from the back just outside of the top 10 yeah Volte been in the pits try somehow right up there on that 35 he had quite a big crash into turn one Conway was slow getting down the pit straight he had electronics problems they tried to change his battery tries but the car wasn't going so he had to retire soon after but this kind of congested the midfield and then Hinchcliffe just dived into turn one he thought Tony Kanan in front was a bit wide in the corner thought there was a gap but no he just clipped the rear bumper of Tony Kanan and went into the pit wall collecting EJ Viso with him and this backed up Ryan Hunter Ray behind him and damaged his front wing and so he had to pit for a new front wing at the end of that Viso had to pit with damage to his right rear suspension he would eventually go out though and but it was not a happy incident for the Andretti Autosport guys Conway also pitted us with that electronic problem and so the caution came out again for another four laps then on that 39 it went green again and so he had a bit of contact in turn two as he was in the midfield rail was up to second in turn one ahead of Frank Kitty Voltier and Kanan were behind power was down to seventh ahead of Wilson he was really struggling with pace in this stint willpower and Marco Andretti did the switch back on Sebastian Bourdais into turn seven it actually worked out for him on the next lap Pagano had a look at Tony Kanan down the front straight and Powell was defending from Wilson in turn nine as a bit of a train form behind Will Power. I'm not going to say that often this season I feel but on that 41 Wilson pushed to pass his way past Powell down the front straight for seven forty he had a bit of a look at Frank Hitty and got passed into third Powell's defending hard now for Mauro Silva into that turn nine on the next that Pagano finally got past Tony Canon for fifth into turn one then on that 43 we had a Honda top five now which is which we didn't really expect after the dominance of Chevy in the first two rounds and we also saw Wilson get past Canon into turn one for sip and now we had a top six of Hondas on that 44 Servia finally got past Powell into turn one for eighth board day got past James Jakes in turn nine for 14th and Andretti Marco Andretti was working his way up he was up to 12th now on lap 48 after a few laps of actually commercials <laughs> so I had to stick to the live timing so I may have missed a couple of bits unfortunately but Ray Hall was catching Sato in the lead. The lead was down to about a second and a half now from about four seconds. Forte was two and a half seconds behind him with Franchetti just over a second behind the rookie. Pagano was 8.2 seconds off the lead and was a second ahead of Wilson as the top six kind of pulled away from the chasing pack behind. Pagano then pitted for red from his blacks for his final stop on that 49. Then on the next lap, we saw Hunter Ray go into the ties in turn seven or turn eight. I always get these turns mixed up, turn seven or turn eight, but I've got turn eight here, I think it was turn seven, but he just dived down the inside of Anna Beatrix and he just carried too much speed, a bit of a tighter line into the corner, of course, going down the inside and it just made him go into the ties. So the caution was out for a few laps and the Takuma Sato and everyone just pitted and Sasa got pitted for new reds like almost everyone only Tony Kanan went on to blacks for this final sting AJ Allmendinger though he stopped on the inside of turn 5 unfortunately on that 52 on the next lap and so that was the end of his race power pitted again because the first time he pitted he kind of stalled in the pits on the exit and he dropped back behind Anna Beach. So he pitted on the next lap as there what seemed to be a problem with his right rear and there was. He his right rear side body he was damaged after he had contact with Tristan Volte on the previous pit stop and Volte was leaving his pits, power was coming into his and he Volte just got released into power's path and hit him unfortunately, but you will find out later in the winners and losers section why I think Volte was kind of but fault for that as well. So they removed the pod and also Joseph Newgarden just topped up on fuel on this lap to make sure he was 
at the end. So by that 55 near the end of this caution period, the order was Takuma Sato from Graham Rahal, Dario Franchitti, Justin Wilson and Tony Kanon in the top five. Oil Serbia got up to sip with Simon Pedrino 7, Simone Di Silvestre 8, J.R. Hildebrand and Marco Andretti completing the top 10. Sebastian Bordet was just outside the top 10 and 11 with Ed Carpenter behind him, Harry Cushino was 13th, Scott Dixon 14th, James Jakes 15th, Tristan Fortier 16th, Anna Beatrix 17th, Joseph Newgarden, Will Power and Charlie Kimball in 20th with Kimball and Tagliani behind him. Tony Kanon was the only driver on blacks, as I said. So, this is going to be an interesting last 25 laps as it went green on the next lap. And Sato got a good start. But Kimball nicked on his outside a lap down, remember, trying to get his lap back. And he just forgot to break for turn one at seed and went into the tyre wall. And this kind of compromised Graham Rahal for making that move on to Kuma Sato. Andretti went down the inside, Di Silvestro in turn nine. For eighth, Pagano, he was out of push to pass, while everyone else had pushed to pass to them for this last stint. And Kimball pit for a new nose at the end of the lap and maybe get some pride as well. On that 57, Servia went past Pagano to turn one for sixth, while Pagano defended her hard before turn nine. And we saw that Marco Andretti, he, his front ring basically cut the right rear tyre of Pagano's. And so Pagano. He was going slowly. Dixon went past Carmona for 12th into turn 1 on the next of that, while Bordet helped break himself into turn 1, went down the escape, but had to turn round and came back out in 18th. Andretti finally made his way past Pagano into turn 1 here for 7th. On that 6D, Hildebrand went past Di Silvestro into 9th for the start and a slow climb, a quiet climb up the order. Jane Jameson went past Carbona for 13th on that 61. Well, Tagliani was the only other driver on blacks apart from Tony Kanon. EJ Viso pitted on that 62 from 24th, and this was after he'd done the fastest lap of the race. On that 66 power on board, they went past Carlton and he continued to slip down the order to 18th. Hildebrand went past Andretti for 7th on that 69. On that 70, Carpenter got passed by Volche and Visa was back into the pits now that he had passed Adrian Wallmandir for 23rd. There's different points awarded for every different, every place in the IndyCar series. And so he went it back into pits as he couldn't gain any further positions being 16 laps down. On that 75 with 5 laps to go, Sato was leading by 4.7 seconds over Ray Hall with, Toka, with Tony Kanan, remember, on black, over 16 seconds behind him fifth. So it looks like these red ties were going to last. On that 78, Bordet went down the inside of power to turn one for 16th. On that 79, Servi tried to go down the inside of Tony Kanan into turn one, but there was not enough room left, and they both ended up in the wall, and Tony Kanan actually stayed in that wall. Like, all your server continued on with some damage. It was a local caution at first, then on the final lap it was changed to a full course caution and this meant Takuma Sato had won the race for AJ Foyt. Graham Ray Hall was second, Justin Wilson third, Dario Grand Kitty fourth and J.R. Hildebrand in fifth. Marco Andretti was sixth, was actually seventh in the end. I say sixth because all server was given a 30 second penalty at first for avoidable contact with Tony Conon for that instant. But an hour later that penalty was rescinded so he's back up to Sith. So in the end Marco Nelly was 7th, Simon Pagano 8th, Simon Di Silvestro 9th and Harry Cachinero has completed the top 10. Scott Dixon was 11th, James Jakes 12th, Joseph Newcomb 13th, Anna Beatrix in 14th, Ed of Sebastian Bourdain 15th, Will Power in 16th, Tristan Volte in 17th, Ed Combs in 18th and Oil Server in I know all your server wasn't in 18th. Alex Tagliani was in 19th. Was in, was in 18th. Oh, Tony Kanon was in 20th. And Charlie Kimball was in 21st. Two laps down. Alex Tagliani and Tony Kanon were a lap down. So we had 18 cars on the lead up in the end. And that was the race recap. So let's look at the winners and losers from this weekend now. So the winners and losers from 
this weekend. Well, of course, the big winner was Takuma Sato in AJ Point Enterprise or AJ Point Racing, as it is on Twitter. And Sato won in his 52nd IndyCar start, and this is his first victory since 2001. The Macau F3 race, the most famous and prestigious F3 race, he won that. And then he went to F1, and we know how that went. And it's been a very long wait for Sato, but very happy for the 36-year-old, you know, first Japanese winner in IndyCar as well. And for AJ Foyt as well, this one-car team for most of the year, going to be a two-car team at the Indy 500 with Connor Daly in that second seat. And Connor Daly was actually at Long Beach that weekend. He got interviewed by NBC Sports Network there, who cover IndyCar in America and also cover F1 in America as well. So, AJ Foy, it was their first, actually, the team's first win for 11 years since 2002 at the Kansas Speedway with Air Ayrton Dale. I apologize, I said that wrong. But yeah, the young busy and they won in Kansas. And that was his last full season in the car, actually. He only did two Indy 500s afterwards for Foy in 2003 and for Smith in 2006. But for AJ Foy, could this be, you know, the sign of maybe some more strong road courses or road and street course races for the rest of the season? There's quite a few on the calendar this year, and you know, Sato is next strong in all of them. Of course, qualified on the front row in St. Petersburg as well, even though he, he only got a top 10 in the end. It didn't quite work out in the race for him to be at the front, but it definitely worked out at this race for him to be at the front and for AJ Foyne as well it's actually their first road course win since 1978 at Silverstone so yeah 35 year rate is finally over but Sato just drove in a race great strategy from the team as well with Larry Foyt there as well running the team basically uh, in the absence of AJ Foyne no wish him well AJ Foyt well for the surgery he's going to have on Wednesday I believe and so yeah that big winners <laughs> AJ Foy and Sato. So behind them was Graham Ray Hall, Ray Hall with Etterman Nanagan and a bit of a mixed bag for them. Ray Hall, much needed result, gets them in the top 10 in the standings. It's, it, the standards are so close, I'm going to tell you them at the end of this program. But yeah, Ray Hall, great race from him as well. He just worked his way up there and for the second of the race, he was right up there at the front. It didn't quite catch up to Sato in the end, but you know, Sato then just controlled his pace for the last stint on those 30. That's on soft tyres. That was like, looking back now, and it's obvious they would have kind of lasted, but at the time, you know, we weren't really sure. As I think in the first stint, the soft tyres went off after about 23 or 24 laps. So, with the track rubbering in, I believe Townsend Bell said this in the commentary, like, you know, the track rubbering in, and, you know, it, it would have been easy to do 30 laps in the end and I think it's hard to say it was an easy win in the end in his post-race interview in victory lane but back to Ray Hall and yeah very much needed result maybe he can push on a bit from here it'd be nice to see him actually challenge at the front more regularly than he has and especially in this time with the Chip Ganassi B team or Gunner B team for the past couple of years but you know with his father's team looks like it's Jed in he, he, He's got the first result, and maybe this could be the start of his season. At Ray Hall, at Manangan as well. James Jakes in 12. Good result for the Englishman there. And, you know, had a very solid race in the midfield. At the back, unfortunately for Mike Conway, who, you know, returned to the IndyCar Series, the scene of his 2011 win. His only win in IndyCar. And it didn't work out for him on that restart where Hinchcliffe went a bit mad. And... It was actually, they changed his battery twice for that car and it was just an electronic issue so they couldn't fix it. But a shame for Conway and I do hope to see him again back later in the year if they can raise the sponsorship and it would be nice to see him, you know, racing a bit more on these road and street cars. I know I said in my preview of the like to see Ed Carpenter hire him for the road and street cars so Carpenter could just, you know, concentrate on the ovals but... You know, that, that of course depends on the bottom line and you know where the sponsors come in. So, yeah, mixed bag for Ray Hall and Nanigan. Behind him, Dale Coyne racing with Justin Wilson and for a brilliant race from the Englishman from the back. Didn't even do a lap in qualifying. But 
he just stayed stayed out of trouble, kept his nose clean, which is you know very very important this race to keep your nose clean. And he just battled through and came through in third. You know, overtook Frank Kitty late in the race after the second to last. No, it was the last restart, the second to last caution. So yeah, very good race from Wilson and his teammate. So Anna Beatrice in fourteenth, good run from her. You know, he didn't get confirmed till you know like a week before the first race and you know the first two races weren't anything to write home about but this race holding it off for day power and volte right at the end to keep that 14th place good run from her and hopefully she can do well in sao paulo at the next race in front of her home crowd we've got chip ganassi racing with dio frank hitty in fourth and scott dixon in 11th and charlie kimball still in that tire wall i think and yeah, it, it was not a good, it was not a, well, it was kind of a mixed bag for Chip Ganassi. Two of them, I would say not a good race. Dixon, I don't, well, I would say 11th is a good recovery drive after what happened on the first lap with, I think it was Voltia, he went into the back of him. And that kind of damaged his car and damaged his race and then he gained a lap back after a caution. And he gently, you know, moved his way through the field. So edge of the top eleven, okay, good recovery. Dario Franchitti, much needed fourth place, much needed result of the finishing last in the first two races. And you know, starting from pole, very good pole as well, beating just beating off Hype Ryan Hunter Ray and Franchitti. Didn't quite have the race pace in in the end, but fourth place, I think he will take that after the start. Of the year and hopefully that can start his season as well in the other chip ganassi car or b team car with charlie kimball and i've got him 21st two laps down he had a couple of poor incidents there the first one with alex tagliani on cold tires a bit ambitious going down the inside unfortunately tangle with tagliani who's known to be a bit passionate when he gets involved with drivers and sometimes that grudge can be held and so I'll be looking out for Tagliani next few races Kimball because you never know what's going to happen if he's near you so yeah that was a poor judgment there and I saw that restart trying to unlap himself and he kind of compromised Graham Rahal and Rahal said that in his post-race interview so it was a poor move from Kimball and he just went into the tire wall it, he really shouldn't have done that move. He probably should have just held, just lifted off that cars through, um, maybe into that first turn. And so, yeah, poor move from Kimball, just a poor race from him, and then kind of a self dealt 21st. After that great run in Barbo, I've expected a bit more from him this weekend. And I think the expectations are lifted a bit more this year for him as well. So he's got to, you know, cut out the rash moves like he did in those in that race, those two rash moves J.R. Hildebrand in 5th for Pound for Racing I'm not sure anybody saw that coming even in the race even in the last stages seeing Hildebrand come in 5th but that last stint he just slowly moved his way up the field he was down in the midfield behind Andretti and just outside the top 10 made it past him made it past Di Selfestra made it past Pagano then took advantage of the Canon Serbia and at the end sneak to top five a brilliant result for him and a much needed result again I know this is a reoccurring theme for drivers much needed results here but fifth place hopefully that can start his season as well and hopefully he can show some more results like this I've been a bit disappointed of him last year I expected a bit more he did show a bit of improvement but again he didn't really you know show those consistent top tens or fives that I kind of expect from him now that you know he he was such a good driver when he was in Indy Lights. You know he tested a Force India as well in the Young Drivers Test in 2010, if I remember correctly. And so yeah, off the back of that, and in the course he almost won the Indy 500 in 2011. Off the back of this, I expect him expect a bit more from Hildebrand, and hopefully he can you know start producing results this year in the other panther or dry and roam bold racing machine oil servia he came in sixth and you know good result and 
He did. He was given that 30 second penalty for avoidable contact with Tony Cannon right after the race, but then about an hour later it was rescinded. And to be honest, I thought that was more Cannon's fault for not leaving room because Serbia was down the outside and Cannon should have just seen him and let him through basically, or give him give him room to do that move because he kind of turned in and there was a car there. So. Yeah, very good run from Serbia for Sif. I said he had a bit of damage earlier on, you know, hitting the back of us in Conway as well. And so, yeah, damage, he had damaged noses, but he made it through and a very solid Sif place and another veteran drive. I'll call it a veteran drive. Drives like those where you don't really notice the driver, but he gets the result. And talking of a driver who wasn't really noticed, that much was Simon Pagano in. 8th I've got here, yes in 8th, so kind of lost the pace in the second half of the race but he he was looking very good for a top 5 for most of that race but he got the result and a good top 10 finish off the back of the result in Barber. Unfortunately for his teammate at Smith, Peterson, Hamilton, HP Most Sports, I think I said it all right, Tristan Volce, yeah that was a Poor incident on the first lap. Really should have uh, been a bit more cautious. And then, when he was leaving the pit lane and collided with real power, the the boys in the commentary box on the NBC Sports Network kind of made a point that when there's a guy right in front of you, you normally put the brakes on. He didn't. He just rolled forward and hit and hit power kind of clumsily. And it was kind of the fault of the, of course, the pit release man as well. You know, for releasing him, but. When there's a car right in front of you, you hit the brakes. He didn't. And so, yeah, that, that was disappointing for Volce. Down in 16th, oh no, 17th place, sorry. So, yeah, he, I'm sure he'll be looking to finally get a result. He's showing great pace in these first three races. He's just not getting the results. I mean, he was up in third place after, you know, that restart with High Hinchcliffe and co going a bit crazy. And, he, that pit stop mistake just cost him a really good result. So hopefully he can, you know, he's a rookie, you know, it's his third start. So hopefully he can learn from these and, you know, improve from in future races. And so let's quickly go through the rest of the team. So we've got KV racing, Di Silvestre in ninth, very good drive from her, you know, and she kind of was a train near the end, uh, unfortunately. You know, he, again with the tyres, not quite lasting for her, but. No, very solid top 10. And Kanan set for top 5 and then he did that. I said that was a mistake from him at the end with Serbia. But he was the only guy to gamble with blacks in that top 20, I think. Drivers or top, well, yeah, top 20 drivers. And didn't work out for him. He didn't have the pace. And, of course, those soft tyres held out. I mean, Sato was on them for 30 laps at the end. And so, yeah, that, that gamble didn't quite work for KV Racing or... You know the safer option for KV racing so yeah just disappointing for Kanani ended up in 20th or classified in 20th place we've got Penske amazing we haven't talked about Penske yet but Kashinevis top 10 good result for the busy and he's kind of anonymous you know that was a veteran drive from him and so in 10th place and AJ Allmendinger he'll be kicking himself for you know another not a mistake in the pits and then he just pulled over on in turn five during the caution and with a problem so again not quite the result I would think he wanted a retirement I don't think anyone wants a retirement but you know not quite the weekend he probably wanted and Will Power down in 16th I don't know what he's done to get such bad luck but he's just not he's just not getting any Results or anything this year. He, I know he's eighth in the standings, but that's because of his result at Barber getting the top five of the alternate strategy that worked out. But power right up there for most of the race. Didn't even have pace even in that middle stint. That was really strange to see from power. Really struggling. And then, of course, that pit incident put him on the way back. And in the end, he couldn't make it past board day or. Beatrix and so he's stuck there down in 16th I, oh, I don't know what's happened to power I mean Sao Paulo is a track he, he really does well at next time out so maybe he can finally get 
you know that win that we all expect from you know the preseason favorite. I always keep, I always keep saying the preseason favorite, and it's just not working out for him at the moment. He's just cursed. But yeah, hopefully it can pick up for him. Maybe even it will pick up on the ovals at the Indy 500 even before he picks up on or before it picks up for him on the road courses. So yeah, that was Will Power. There's one guy who missed out of the top ten, wasn't it? Marco Andretti in seventh, and he was the only Andretti Autosport guys to do well. Poor day for Andretti Autosport, mainly thanks to one of their drivers, James Hinchcliffe, and that crazy Banzai movie he did. I know he said that TK left the gap and then turned in sharply, but you're you're about 20 meters back. You're that was way too dive bomberish. You you got to think of the whole race there and. Yeah, that was a poor move from Hinch here from the mayor of Hinch Town and you know it took out EJ Viso who had a bit of a damaged suspension but they Viso then went back out, did some laps, did the fastest lap of the race actually, Viso. And he was down in twenty second, I think, as in as he came back in the pits with like ten laps to go because he couldn't actually gain any more places then. But yeah, poor move from Hinch I also caught out Ryan Hunter Ray as well, and then Hunter Ray took himself out of the race after a bit of a dive down the inside of Anna Beatrix and turn seven, and just mis misjudged the speed there and went into the tire wall. So, yeah, just not a good day for Andretti or spot, but a great day for Marco Andretti in seventh. And he's in the top five in the standings. I don't ever remember Marco being in the top five in the standings, and so. This looks like he. This looks like a new Marco Andretti, a Marco Andretti that will get results and that will get the job done on race day, and will always be up there. And will and he's grinding out results, and it's great to see. And it's great to see finally that Marco might be, you know, fulfilling some of that promise he showed, especially in his rookie year when he won at Sonoma. But yeah, Marco Andretti, very good start to the year for him. Servisher Hartman racing with. New Garden in 13th and again a bit of an ominous race for him I think he topped off the near the end on that last pit stop and just went to the finish and 13th quite a solid result for him I, I did expect a bit better from him especially after last year when he qualified on the front row and then he had that collision with Frank Kiddy at the first corner but this year he, he did show glimpses of pace but in practice didn't <laughs> And so, in the race, I think the 13th is a good result for him. And it's just encouraging for him to just build results. And he got his first top 10, as I said last time out in Barber Motorsports Park. And to get that far with a 13th, a good, solid result for him and you know, for the team as well. And now he can just build forward. Just continuing getting these around the top 10 finishes. Just concentrate on that. And then, of course, maybe more results, better results will come data in the season and that leaves us with Ed Carpenter racing I believe in 18th Uncle Ed as I called him in the series and Ed he's not the best road course racer or a street racer I think everyone knows that and I've already said you know I, I would love to see Mike Conway on the road and course st street courses in that car and that Ed kind of concentrate on the ovals and a bit on the management side of his own team even though he's got a very good manager in Rob Walker there and Ed Carpenter just slipped down the order in the last there he slipped down from around 12th I think around yeah ahead of New Garden and he just slipped down the order at the last but that's expected from Carpenter and so yeah not no nothing new there and finally Alex Tegelani in 20th of that down yeah he just got kimbled and he, he just couldn't get that lap back and he, it seemed like he showed solid pace as well he's one of those alternate strategy guys along with Sato in the early parts and Hinchcliffe so that would have been interesting to see if it played out if he didn't get Kimballed so yeah that is all the winners and losers let's go to of the race so of the race and driver of the race and team of the race, it is quite obvious, isn't it? It has to be Sato and AJ Foyt for just avoiding the chaos at the front, for getting the strategy right, for going on those soft tyres at the end of 30. That so I know we didn't think it would play out at the time, but looking back now, a day later, it was quite obvious it would. They were 
kind of hold on at least for about 27 28 out so you you know, there won't be too much wear at the end because as I think Tan's album Bell said in the commentary, you know, you know the track's rubbered in a bit now and in the early scenes when they were last in 23, 24 laps, there was not as much rubber down but now there is and so yeah, it should have kind of lasted 30 laps looking back now but yeah, they just got everything right, Sato and AJ Fon and over due win for both of them there and you can't really fault their race. So at least overtake of the race and I'm looking through my notes here I can't really remember a, a, a very memorable overtake but I remember the ones that didn't work out so <laughs> I remember those more than the overtakes that did work out but I think there's a I'm not sure if we saw it on screen but I think the over under from Andretti on Bourdais late in the race or in the mid part of the race after a restart he kind of did the undercut on him into turn six went a bit wide and then you know cut down on the inside for turn seven so i was going to give it to marco and really for his move on sebastian bourdais not a mean feat to pass bourdais you know and especially around here and that was our place last year you know marco he had an incident with grain rail and he kind of was not flying but his car was in the end and air and that was quite a worrying and it was great to see he was fine there and that's the place where that pass happened so yeah very good move from Marco Andretti even if we didn't kind of see it on screen and we just got text versions of it but yeah I've heard it was a good move I know but <laughs> yeah it was a very good move I could also give it to him for his move on the inside of diesel best joint to turn 9 for 8 on that 56 he was it so yeah, Marco Andretti was going to win this anyway on moves I've not seen and moves I have seen. So yeah, give it to Marco Andretti for either's move on Di Silvestro or Bourdais. But yeah, that is my review of the Grand Prix of Long Beach. IndyCar is back in Sao Paulo in early May and then it's the Indy 500. The month of May at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But I'll be back with my review of the Bahrain Grand Prix as well. There was some other series called F1 on this weekend as well. And there was also, you know, MotoGP that was very enjoyable. You know, seeing Mark Marquez become the youngest rider to win in that series. And of course, following out from this youngest rider to get pole and, you know, beating Freddie Spencer's record from 30 years ago. So, yeah, that was great to see. So, yeah, that's my review. I do hope you have enjoyed it i'll be back with the sao paulo preview for indycar series and as i said bahrain grand prix review probably up tomorrow so salam up for watching so till next time cheerio